Hey guys, Brandon Lewis here for trading, and I'm here with Todd of Delta Diner. And uh, Todd's from Iron River area, which is where we just relocated to, and we're here hanging out, drinking some coffee that he brought from his diner, and gonna talk, just hang out, and record it for you guys to listen to. Good to be here. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what brought you to Bayfield County? I texted you that the other day. Yeah, and, and, I answered <laughs> and you it. answered it in text, but that's uh, that's kind of how I wanted to start. Was what brought you here? Uh, it, it, I'll give you the short version because it's a long story. Okay, but, but we basically ran away from corporate, and um, we were living out on the East Coast in my career, and I uh, had some series of well, one major thing. My father died at fifty-two, and uh, it was kind of a wake-up call, and uh, realized that. Uh, you know, things were going well for us, but we were in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that age, it took us about five years to dial our nut back to a point where we could make a, a decision for ourselves. Yeah. And uh, it actually led us to uh, another kind of intersection with you in Fort Atkinson. Because uh, when we went back from out east, we had a place in Madison, and uh, I ended up working in Fort Atkinson. So when I first saw your feed, and it was Fort Atkinson, that caught my eye, yeah. of course. Yeah, but uh, we were there for a couple of years and uh, eventually bought property up here, and we ended up way up here because we could afford property here. Back uh, back in the early '90s, pro property was pretty cheap up here. Yeah, and uh, our five-year plan turned into a six-month plan, and uh, talked to Nina, my wife, into uh, dropping everything and uh, came up here. We spent a year building a house a mile back in the woods and. The, uh, the adventure started. Is that your house that you still live in? No, no. We uh, when we first moved up here, it was kind of between Delta and Iron River. Um, I had to had to build a mile long driveway to get to the get to the site, and uh, uh, literally finished the house, drove the last nail uh, the day we sold it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of the story of a carpenter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you were telling me that one uh, at that time at the diner that you're like, just don't finish your house. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, because you'll, you'll be selling it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've still got three, four pieces of trim that aren't done in the current house and they're uh, sitting over in the corner. They're going to yeah. stay there. Yeah. yeah. So Todd uh, operates currently a uh, 1940s diner mm -hmm. uh, that he, did you relocate the diner? Uh, we found a guy um, in Ohio. Who restores diners? Okay, and they uh, do something. Uh, their definition is a uh, uh, frame up restoration. Okay, so a lot of these diners back in the in the late fifties, early sixties, they were just outside the metro areas on the east coast because they were built in factories as modular restaurants. They're just towed there on a trailer, taken on a flatbed, sometimes on a train. But that's why they have the shape they have. Mm -hmm. uh, they kind of look like train cars because yeah. they had to be long and narrow to get to get to the site. So uh, when the you know kind of strip malls started happening, they they would take these diners since they're mobile by nature and move them off the site and set them out in a farm field somewhere. And uh, uh, people somewhere down the road decided to restore. Them. Oh, cool! Because they're iconic. You know, I mean, they're they're the, the social gathering spots that when you go in one. And that's how I had my first experience. I, I think I was 12 years old in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and. My mom and dad loaded my brother up in the, the old, uh, what was, I think it was a 72 Ford Torino with faux wood sides. Nice. Uh, station wagon. Station wagon, wagon. Yes. Yeah. And we headed east uh, so mom and dad could teach the boys what America's all about. Yeah. And we, well, road trip. Yeah. Yeah. So Valley Forge and, and Gettysburg and Washington, D.C. and, and uh, all those places. But somewhere in Pennsylvania, we stopped and had, uh, had a, my first diner meal. And it was... Uh, I think it was might have been a Mountain View diner. Now that I think back, mm -hmm. uh, but stainless steel. I mean, the food was good, average, but the experience sitting at the counter. Yeah, I, I was done. I yeah. was. I was at that point. I I was died in the wool diner, and, uh, and then through the years, when I was in corporate in publishing and sales and marketing, I would spend quite a bit of time on the East Coast. You know, I'd drive forty miles out of the way to, to go sit at the counter just because yeah. it's. It, of that dynamic, that vibe. Yeah, yeah. for sure. It, uh, it it reminds me, going to your diner reminds me of when I drove semi and was on the East Coast. And it's like, they all of the old truck stops still have, yeah. uh, the independent yeah. truck stops still have a, a little diner 
attached to them or, or in the parking lot of some sort. Right. And right. Um, yeah, starting my mornings off at Delta Diner was like, made me feel good about the, uh, that I could still experience that and not be sitting in a Well, it's, and it's the same mix, you know, because the cool thing about diners is they're, especially today, they're a, they're a great equalizer. Because back, uh, you know, in the late 80s, mid 80s, late 80s, I was in a suit and tie. And I'm sitting at the counter next to somebody who's hauling over the road, and yeah. on the other side is somebody, uh, you know, in a VW microbus that's, yeah. uh, you know, checking out a life for, for three, four years. And yeah. But it's an equalizer where everybody has a conversation. When people talk, guess what? You find out that you got more in common than you don't. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so that was that was really the, the hook. And then we decided just to elevate the food, um, you know, keep it diner genre, but take every line item uh, from how you cook an egg to how you cook bacon and, and try and um, have people's expectations be uh, uh, be surpassed by a number of levels where it becomes this experience. Yeah. Because um, we're really not in the food business, we're in the experience business, whether it's a tap shack or the diner or a taste buds. Um, yeah. You know, nothing can root or a really good food experience faster than bad food. Uh, but if you do the opposite, it, uh, you know, you can take it off the charts at that point. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, it's definitely a non-traditional diner food. Yeah. It's got it's got every single thing on the menu. It's got a little bit of a like a zing to it, uh, something that makes it a little bit different than what you would see at a, a truck stop diner that I'm used to. It's not well, just hash browns. Yeah, <laughs> but you can still get the classic, the classic ambiance and the the, the gut feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that's George Webb was a place, obviously uh, Waffle House. Yeah, but like you said, every every little truck stop, that was the deal. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. 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 A cup of coffee and some food on the belly. And so uh, Delta Diner is located in the middle of the National Forest, mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool. So first time I saw it, I was being uh, brought up by Jacob, who mm -hmm. we'll be featuring in a video because uh, we're going to be recording with him later today. Um, Jacob's like, hey, I want to take you to this diner for breakfast. And we were coming down from Barnes. Okay. Uh, we didn't come through Iron River. We came a different way, and I'm not yeah. actually sure which way. But it was very, the Delta Drummond Road. Yeah. Very twisty way. Yeah. Uh, and I actually probably should figure out that drive because it was kind of nice. But we were driving up, and we come around that bend at the end, and all of a sudden it's like the diners there. It's it's this yeah. it's this uh, like magical <laughs> corner of uh, the woods. You you just came through a bunch of lakes yeah. and trees and the Delta Diners there and um, it was pretty early in the morning right when you guys open up when we can try to get a table and that was my first diner experience uh, for Delta Diner and I was just like what is this I kind of felt like a kid coming to Disneyland uh, <laughs> back when we opened in 2003 the question was um, a little more dramatic because people thought we were having nuts yeah you know because we did plop it in the middle of the yeah yeah but it was fun to watch as cars go by and maybe the first time they went by uh, since we brought in the diner and the brake lights invariably would hit right yeah. when they're going past. The, you know, luckily there were no accidents. Yeah. It's like, what is that doing there? You know? For sure. I can see how uh, it would, people would be skeptical of that being a, a, uh, that puts us. it mildly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. getting the skepticism uh, since moving here yeah. on, um, you know, good luck on your new business, uh, things like that. And um, I'm sure that this is something that you dreamed of pretty yeah. much your whole life or since you were a teenager um, on the East Coast. And it's like, this isn't a new idea. This is no. something that you'd built on and, and refined and refined it. And then we're well, in the, the, the frustrating thing about, and I'm generalizing here, so, yeah. you know, but frustrating thing about corporate is the, the time span of an acceptable ROI is very short. We're in year 19 right now. Yeah. And we're going to, we're going to stop building infrastructure after 19 years where now we have the model that we want. And there are all sorts of other things that, that, you know, permutations that we can take from that in terms yeah. of the model and scalability. But it's taken us 19 years to build it. Yeah, you would have um, that, that is not for job. That is not acceptable. <laughs> yeah, they would have been like, "Sir, you've wasted 19 <laughs> years." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, the the burn rate on a on a new restaurant concept. I don't know a ton about this, but it, you know, from just the stuff I've looked into, is it can be anywhere from from two to six million dollars. And you know, so we've we've spent a million over 19 years. Yeah. But because of that, the the nuances of it 
lot of times when you compress it, you don't get those nuances because you you don't have the, the time yeah. to, to be able to, to figure it out at the depth and the level that you can when yeah. when you're not in a hurry. And, yeah. You know, if we if the idea was was uh, turn maximum profit right away, we would have stayed in the old career. Yeah. Uh, this this was more kind of a, a passionate thing. And, and trying to swim upstream as much as we can to, to create something that's unique and different. Yeah. Yeah, I experienced that when I worked in um, plant maintenance, where it's like you're, you're, it's like get it done so you can get to the next thing. Right. And uh, after getting back into working for myself again, because I took a kind of a hiatus and went into that corporate job style thing, and uh, I like it. You know, we just got done hanging steel here, and it's like yeah. if it takes four days instead of two, it's okay. Yeah, because we're gonna doing it right. And we're right. never gonna have to do it again. Right. I'm never gonna have to hang steel in this warehouse again. No. Uh, so if if it takes an extra two days in the grand scheme, of my you know uh, my plan for Whiskey River, yeah. I can take an extra two days. To well, you're you're afforded the opportunity to think long term. Yeah, and and. A lot of times that that means that you're not making up for for bad short-term decisions. Yeah, exactly. Down the road, so yeah. but you gotta you need a, a period of time. I mean, when we first opened up, uh, the first year scared the hell out of me because we had way more people coming than, than we could handle. I mean, we had a we had an I'm a systems kind of process orientation guy, and we weren't there yet, and so we were just taking care of people. Um, you know. The shiny building attracted a lot of people, yeah. but a lot of those people wanted us to be the same as the restaurant down the road, just in a shiny building that cost a lot of money, and we couldn't afford to be that. Yeah. So I literally took all forty percent of my seating and put a desk in, or you know, a shelving unit, whatever, just so that we had less capacity to yeah. slow it down, because uh, I wasn't going to like the business I had. Yeah. Five, five years down the road, and it was. We were hurting for money because uh, you know we went heavily into debt to do this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you know, pushing money away while you're, you know, screaming for uh, for income to be able to make yeah. it all work, it was a great long term decision, but it, it was hard at the time. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, it's worth mentioning that I've waited over an hour to get food at the diner, and that's a pretty common thing, and it's mm -hmm. definitely worth the wait. And I can see how a lot of um, yeah, people are turned off by that, and that's okay. Yeah, and like those are the customers who are. And it's the same thing that we do with Whiskey River. It's the customers who are complaining, like one hundred and seventy dollars for an axe. It's like you don't have to buy this. Yeah, <laughs> you know that's we right. don't we don't have to sell this product to you. Um, we only want to sell products to people who actually want them. And right. I feel the vibe at Delta Diner is is like, trust me, it's worth the wait. Well, I, I before I met you, um, I followed you on social media. Yeah. And I don't know exactly how that happened. You may have been at the diner, you may have mm -hmm. tagged us. It might have been the Fort Atkinson thing, but yeah. immediately it was a connection. I like axes. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, not like you, but I like axes. <laughs> and uh, so I started following you, and, and I could kind of get that sense because, you know, it's not a, a good, bad thing. Uh, we're not for everybody. Yeah. I mean, we cook our bacon one way. And I learned that because the first year, People would say, "I want it crispy, or I want it burnt, or I want it, I want it loose." Mm -hmm. Well, what does that mean? So I chase my tail, and you're wrong 50% of the time yeah. because it's all subjective. Cook it one way, draw an audience to it, and the people who don't want it that way, wish them happiness wherever they can find it because yeah. they deserve happiness. It's just not going to be here because I can't do that. So we do the same thing with eggs. We do you know, right on down the line. And if you're consistently doing it one way and you can explain it to people, they may not like it, but at least they're gonna respect it. Yeah. And the same thing with the weight. We don't see a lot of our best off-season customers all summer because they're living and working up here. They're not on vacation. Yeah. They can't wait an hour and a half to come in and get a bite yeah. to eat. I get it. I haven't been to the diner. Yeah. I've been to the diner just twice, probably since April. Uh, and, uh, but in the off-season when I was up here, yeah. I guess May. Yeah, I mean, June first, I kind of slowed down coming to the diner. You had your regular day. Yeah, yeah in the spring. Yeah, in the spring. Yeah, I was having my regular day. It was like <laughs> I was up here by myself. The family wasn't up here yet. It's like an easy breakfast. Number three, it's classic breakfast. Uh, I can sit down, get a table right away, and yeah. then I'm sure that this uh, this winter, as we yeah, once you, know, you get past the third week of October, yeah, I can yeah. jump back into coming to the diner in the mornings, and um, it's a it's interesting the um the crowd 
that is that comes there the you can tell that there's like an energy of the people who come there in the summer that they've been like waiting yeah to come they're well, like they're we're here some, again. Yeah, yeah some cool stories Super like excited. somebody coming from milwaukee and uh because it, we've got this unique building out in the middle of nowhere um it's what i call over the transom it's when when media and exposure comes to you and it's like it's jumping in the boat you're not going out and casting for it yeah and we've been fortunate to get quite a bit of that and one of the first articles was a review in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, which could have been disastrous, yeah. except it, it went well. How long ago? And, uh, this would have been year three, maybe, so 2006, so 16 okay. years ago. And um, so about five years later, uh, this uh, couple shows up, and she reaches in her purse and unfolds this thing, and it's that it's that article. And she'd been waiting six years to, yeah. to get there. Yeah. Um, I'd I'd love to write a book, diner stories that are just little vignettes and like that. I mean, yeah. there was second year we were open, uh, booth four, which is now the the hostess station. Yeah. Uh, there was a guy sitting there, and first fifteen years I was at the grill. Mary's been there for four, but I you recognize whether people have been in before or not. And he's over there eating pancakes. And so we're close, you know, we're right out front. I walk over and uh, introduce myself and yeah. ask him how the pancakes are. And he said, you know, my grandma used to make pancakes like this. And I said, well, where are you from? He said, Janesville. I said, Janesville, what brings you up here? Do you got friends, family? He said, no, I saw the article. And yeah, it's been crazy. years since I've been in a diner and there was a diner like this in my neighborhood where I grew up out east. And my mom was Norwegian and made pancakes. And I heard those two things. I had the day off today, so I drove up for breakfast. And, and that's a that's a six seven hour seven hour drive. That's not like yeah. That's not like I, I just drove an hour down the road. But he's going home that night. Yeah. So he's fourteen hours for one trip. An hour to eat. Yeah. He's and, he's he's working fifteen <laughs> hours that day. Basically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's paying attention. It was like wow. that's crazy. But that's that's the the impact that the diners have on people. Yeah. yeah it's, it's part of it. That's interesting. Uh, the bacon story that you just told about not offering it in. Um, in any way, yeah. uh, I can relate to Dalton's holding the camera right now, and I think he can probably also relate with that's how we run our handles uh, specifically, yeah. and uh, offering them in A grade, and we used to only offer them in A grade. Our loss that we took on only selling A grade was like terrible, and it just wasn't feasible for our business to scale off of. So now we offer a B grade handle, which is still ten times better than a right. uh, hardware store handle, and you've seen them. Yes. Um, but we don't offer anything less than a B grade uh, because that's not what we want to do. Uh, and if right. you're not okay with an A grade and a B grade and you're not okay with the price of those, it's just like right. here's here's the links to the other handle companies on the internet. Yeah. And then that's okay for you to go shop with them. You know, like here, go check out House Handle, go check, check out Beaver Tooth Handle because they're able to offer you like a budget friendly handle that you can like beat the snot out of and be okay breaking and feel, right. feel okay right. with that. So. Um, well, that yeah. goes to, you know, at least for me, and I see it in you too, is that you, you decide who you are. Yeah. And then you're, you try and be transparent and authentic about what you are, and, and you're letting other people decide. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's the weight. I mean, in the early years, I'd have booths available, but we weren't ready to serve a customer. And we can't bring somebody in the door and sit them in a the booth until we're ready yeah. to serve. Yeah, have them sit there for 40 minutes waiting to have someone yeah. come over. Because uh, the minute that somebody walks in the door, legitimately and understandably, the clock starts ticking mm -hmm. and you need to be able to take care of that customer. So that's yeah. why I took booths out because I, I didn't want people to see booths. I did not know that. When when we when we weren't able to fill that booth until, until we could do an excellent yeah. job with them. Yeah. So, you know, it's... It's an interesting journey when you're, as you know, building something from scratch, but you have a very specific model goal in mind in terms of what you want it to be, not today, but eight years from now. Yeah. And everything you do today impacts what it's gonna be eight years from now. Yeah, for sure. And at the same time, you're like, I have a vision of what eight years from now looks like, but yeah. I'm not actually quite sure. Right. You know? So it's right. like, I'm building this to set up for something that I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna yeah. look like, but I think that the step I'm taking right now is yeah. going to set me up for success, whatever it looks like. Anyway. And it's cool when you have, you know, customers who, who can't see that, they're going to migrate away mm -hmm. and understand that. That's fine. The ones who kind of get it 
and have faith. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, it's like, hold and on. Hold yeah, on. and you share the story with them, and they come on the journey with you. Yeah. And, and there's an ownership by those people then of the experience mm -hmm. that uh, that's, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah it's the, uh, if you stick with your band after they sold out to yeah. everybody else, uh, you're actually gonna really enjoy yeah. watching their success. And I've, I've seen that with musicians and artists and such where they get their fame and yeah. it's, as long as you liked them for their art, right? what's the, what's the problem with them getting famous? I actually want to see them become successful and yeah. um, not saying that either you or I are famous, but in this case in business is like just being able to not have to um, struggle to sell or, or struggle to, like you said, the traffic's organically coming in now right. uh, and it's taken a long time for you to get to that point. Right. Um, that's success in business yeah. uh, in a certain way. Yeah, and you share that, you share that experience with, with those customers who, who make, it, make it happen. Yeah, that's and a good feeling. And if it's organic, like you were saying, we're, we're you know, I mean, that, that relationship is, is something that, uh, you know, we get value out of it, our staff gets value out of it, mm -hmm. but it's critically important. I mean, the, the restaurant business is a, a true up, spit you out business. Definitely. I mean, and I tell people I'd never want to be in it, yeah. uh, but I'm, I'm in this one specific business. Yes, and very niche, yes. So we, we try and make sure that the people who are coming in and sitting in the booth to enjoy that experience are the right people. Because if I put the wrong people in, what happens is that discontent, because we may not be able to satisfy them, mm -hmm. is going to reflect back on our staff. And it's a hard enough job as it is. Yeah. If it's a shared experience, then, then there's purpose in the work because they're coming to work every day and they're getting more out of it than just a really good paycheck. Yeah. And so, it, and if I, you know, our booths are close together. Definitely. If simply because there's money in the wallet, uh, I'm not doing a good job of, of making sure that potential customers know what we do well and what we don't do. Mm -hmm. um, and I put them in that booth. That person is going to impact everybody sitting around them. And, yeah, and we've all been to a restaurant like that. Where yeah, it's like, man, this guy needs to get off his phone and stop yeah. screaming at his kid, you know, or right. whatever. And there are people who've driven six hours to come who have a, you know, a, an article from six years ago yeah. in, in their pocket. Yeah, and that is their time. Yeah. So, you know, it's our obligation to make sure that we're trying to create uh, create this shared, harmonious kind of experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, art. Art. So, you told me one time that this all started with art. Yes. Uh, and that's something that uh, we've talked about a little bit on YouTube, but haven't talked about a bunch. Uh, so, I drove semi okay. when I went and did the diner thing. I started welding art when I was 14 uh, with a welder that uh, my buddy's mom bought us both and was like, hey, well, this is a chicken sculpture and you get to keep the welder. And at 14, you think she's gonna take it back, you know, if you don't, but we welded her a chicken sculpture and uh, it's still around, it falls apart all the time because we didn't actually know how to weld, but went through piles of welding wire and- So chicken, it's not really just like, but chicken yeah, it's sculpture. Just like a, that she just sent us with that, and so we ended up taking like a lawnmower engine and making the body, and then actually as an axe head is the uh, um, kind of like the the structure for the head it has some sockets welded for eyes and a um, like a wrench of sorts for a beak. I actually have to see if I can take a picture when I'm down in Port next week. Um, so was she just trying to occupy your time? Uh, she Were just you wanted to get, like I had a, no. It was like <laughs> it was like uh, he he lived in town. They lived in town, and I uh, lived with my father um, on a dairy farm and we had a, a decent shop and so okay. she wanted us to be like use the shop now we were wrenching on cars and stuff I had a Camaro I was fixing up when I was a kid and um, she was like here here's a tool that you guys can probably learn a decent trade on and um, super grateful for that that's awesome. experience yeah um, I think uh, more people should do that for their children <laughs> you know it's like here uh, here's a whole pile of welding wire um, make sure you weld with a helmet on and have fun so, started welding art, uh, ended up going to college in New Mexico to climb wind turbines. Uh, I worked at, an, or I lived at an antique store, so I had like an avenue to sell artwork right. and was doing, that's kind of where I fell into the Western folk art style that I have. Um, cowboy themed, you know, um, junk, rusty stuff that you weld into um, functional art or just, um, you know, garden pieces. Right. And, 
started selling it like crazy, was painting houses on the side, and then was like, you know what, I actually don't have any interest in being in college. Uh, so dropped out and was making decent money painting houses and uh, welding art and moved back here uh, to, or not here, to Fort Atkinson and ended up um, working a farm maintenance job again. That's kind of the job I had when I was a teenager, working on tractors and again, parts from tractors coming off and welding art with and uh, then took a contract job in Chicago working for the city. We welded these three life-sized Victorian houses uh, and then we lit them on fire. Uh, they were cladded in wood and then lit on fire while they floated on the river, uh, the Chicago River in this big spectacle that was supposed to, uh, the, the mayor's wife had this big vision that if uh, a bunch of sculptures uh, and my artist friends who are, were participating in this might not like how I word this, but um, you know, like people in Chicago shoot each other and all the villages kind of fight and yeah. the, you've got all this, everyone's kind of arguing in Chicago. That's how the city's always been. And art in the mayor's wife's mind was what was gonna bring the city together. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we welded sculptures and did this whole thing. I lived in Chicago for two summers, uh, 24 weeks and then 26 weeks. And um, that kind of like pushed me off onto the more professional side of art. And uh, I led a crew the second year and was their like lead fabricator for that project. And um, got home from that and uh, actually ended up getting hurt down there. And that's when I got my CDL and started driving truck worried that I wasn't going to be able to right. work. I messed up my shoulder. And, um, so then I hired Dalton, uh, to start offering our stuff on the internet. That was like, my vision was all of these hundred years ago. Was that? that was 2016. Yeah. Okay. So, so six years now, six years is huge in terms of technology and everything else. In Definitely. Terms of what you can do on the yeah, internet. We've, yeah. We've, we have evolved, uh, Every quarter, we're growing to the point where we're not recognizable from the previous quarter. Well, one of the one of the things, you know, Fort Atkinson, obviously, mm -hmm. on your, I think it was Instagram, mm -hmm. where, where I first caught up with you, but the the content you were doing, because we would love to drive that kind of content. Yeah, and we were just Unbinder. talking about yeah. earlier that that content's happening, and we're chasing our tail, taking care of customers, so we yeah. we have trouble creating it. And uh, I remember I, I would watch everything that came through and just think, well, that's cool. You know, and it just kept elevating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Our content has gotten significantly better, I think, in the last year. And the people we're working with as far as partnering on affiliate marketing and um, some uh, just makers that we're friends with, uh, the Guild Project, things like that, where our content has progressively became yeah. better. And that is. That has been because in the last year we've been focusing more on turning back into the art side of things. So right. we have this axe company that uh, offers great products and such, but there's these uh, smaller time makers and artists talking yeah. inside this community that right. we can kind of extract and help yeah. uh, through our platform. And so our content has grown and became better because of that. Right. Um, so yeah. Uh, it's interesting how that all happens because it's you know I mean there, you got all these buckets of of from when you were driving truck. You know I was a sales guy. Yeah. Uh, who loved diners? Uh, I love food. My yeah. wife loves food. You know so the map as to how you get to this yeah. room, what you're doing right now, with the people around you who are part of that experience, yeah. and it becomes this thing. Yeah. It's yeah. a. Uh, when you look at it from the outside as kind of a map, it all makes sense. But when you're in it, you're like, I feel like this is just the right move to make. And in right. this case, Dalton's uh, very good at the computer side of things. And also he was at home and he was kind of dissatisfied with his job uh, and that he was working. And I was like, hey, would you like to uh, help handle the stuff while I'm on the road? So on Saturdays when I was home, I could weld uh, yeah. and weld up our standardized items. Uh, the old man that I worked at, who was an Agri-4, uh, he'd kill me for calling him an old man. Probably shouldn't have said that. He won't watch this. He's, probably, uh, he's, probably younger <laughs> he's old now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, he'll also kill me for that. Uh, but he uh, was an agricultural economist, so I worked for him for nine years on his farm doing ag uh, agricultural maintenance and managing teenagers in the fall with harvest and uh, 
all that and he always said you don't have a business unless you have inventory mm -hmm. i mean it just applies to your business it applies yeah. to dalton's business my business and we um and so when i was in the truck i was focusing on making sure we had pre-made art so wall pieces that could be replicated and um offered on etsy yeah. so we were purely on etsy then we started um we never started a Shopify store with our artwork in it. Um, the Shopify store that we have now, WhiskeyRiverTrading.com, um, started once we started offering council tool products. Okay. And that was in the uh, February of 2017. We got the council tool uh, relationship started. My father's a tool designer for them, or at that time was a commission tool designer. Now he's a full-time employee. but. Um, and then the handles followed and all of the accessories and all of that. But yeah, Etsy, selling on Etsy is the, the, like, the main mission on selling on Etsy is just getting it out there. Yep. If you don't have it listed, it can't sell um, versus a Shopify store like we have now, which is supported by all of these social media platforms and friendships and all of that where you can sell things in the DMs um, on Instagram. Um, and that is cultivated by that Shopify store where Etsy it's like the more items you get on there, the better, the more you sell. Yeah. And because well, it's and, you list. and you mentioned too, that you need original stuff that can be scaled. Yeah, exactly. So, so that you can sell multiple to them. Yeah. You know, I mean, and it's like Etsy ranks based on uh, early Etsy. Etsy has evolved so far. I've, I started selling on it in 2011 when I was in New Mexico. So, I've been on Etsy and we're still on Etsy and we do a pretty good amount on Etsy this uh, annually still. Um, so that's 11 years on Etsy, that's pretty crazy. But I've seen Etsy just evolve and as a platform and um, I see the pushback on every evolution by artists and makers and uh, vintage salesmen that are on there. And uh, it's always interesting where you just have to kind of do it your own way and stick with what you know. Yeah. And it's the evolution that Etsy is putting out. Whatever, whether it's like the Star Seller badge, or you know the uh, which they just launched last year, or um, how you're ranked uh, mm -hmm. in there. You just have to stick with what you want to do, yeah. and it's you're gonna fit into that evolution. Yeah. Um, and I guess that's the similar thing with the diner. You know, you can. <laughs> Or the tap shack. I mean, it's like you can offer beer, yeah. right? And you could be like everybody else. You could yeah. be like every other bar and serve yeah. beer, or you could be like how exactly you want to be serving beer, right? And, right. And that's you know, and never change from our relationship with Earth Rider. Yeah. You know, um, economically, it's probably a disadvantage for us to uh, have an organic partnership with with a local craft brewer where there's no financial involvement. Yeah. We pay the same price for the beer that everybody else does, mm -hmm. but it's all we serve. We have eight taps of, of Earthrider. Yeah. But we like the people, we like their culture, and, and we love the beer. Yeah. So when people walk into the Tap Shack, which is right next to the diner, it's our, our seasonal outdoor venue, um, we are essentially a non-affiliated seasonal destination tap room for them. For them, yeah. And, and an hour away that, yeah. from where they are. And, you know, you can leverage brands. Um, you can you can do all sorts of things that you can't do if you're just selling beer. Yeah. So when people come in and they've never had an Earth Rider, uh, their story becomes part of our story. Yeah. No different than our relationship at the diner with with uh, Ashland Baking Company. Yeah. I mean, we're we're fortunate up here in the middle of nowhere to have a world class artisan Definitely. bakery. Definitely. That I mean, we traveled. We were in Europe for two weeks uh, looking for a baguette that matched what Ashland Bacon Company does, and, and we found one. Yeah. You know, so you have In a small town. Ashland's a small town. Small town. Yeah, like, it, yeah. for people watching, this is like a, this is like a, a town of 3,000 people? Yeah. You know? Yeah. 4,000? Yeah. Three or four. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a relatively small community, and it has a, a very small yeah. little room that you walk into, and it smells amazing, and there's yeah. people moving around, great energy, uh, it's just an amazing business. When I first saw it in this old building, I was like, oh, interesting, walk yeah. in, and it's just- Well, I'm not who owns it, also owns a black cat across the street, so, yeah. you know, which is an awesome coffee, coffee shop. shop. Again, world-class coffee shop. Yeah, I, big time. We, yeah. 
traveling. <laughs> you like coffee, I like coffee. It's like I've been to uh, coffee places in Austin and yeah. out in uh, Los Angeles, and they honestly, this one's yeah, this one's just as good as the best. Well, and that's that's what's happened up here. You know, I mean that's Ashland County, but uh, let's call it the South Shore yeah. uh, region is, and you're an example of it. Um, there's something about this area, uh, whether it be the, the rivers, the, the forests, the Lake Superior, Shawamigan Bay, the Apostle Islands. I mean, there's all this natural beauty up here that just grabs you. And uh, there are a lot of really passionate people who then need to figure out how it is that they're going to make a living up here. Yeah. So you have these passion-based businesses that, that create either great experiences, great products, uh, whatever it might be. Yeah. And um, we're fortunate that there are a, a lot of those up here. And Definitely. Uh, in terms of value of life living here, it yeah. makes that awesome. My know? life has gotten exponentially uh, better uh, in multiple different avenues since living here in the yeah. last two, yeah. few months. It's like I. I'm more relaxed, and when I wake up in the morning and I go outside, I can smell the lake. You yeah. know, I mean, sure, you can't smell the lake anymore because we're probably used to it. The river. The river. Yeah. Do you think I'm smelling the river? No, I'm smelling. The river. Oh, you're smelling yeah. the river. Okay. Because yeah. I can smell water, and I'm yeah. assuming it's Lake Superior in the mornings, yeah. Uh, yeah. which is something you never smell in Fort Atkinson. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And Lake Superior kind of dictates our life up here. It's yeah. fun watching. Uh, because we have an outdoor venue, I watch Doppler radar. Yeah, line. exactly. And, and uh, south, there's a line that runs south of Duluth, and these storms are coming across. And when it hits that line, really weird, funky things happen. I mean, it can split, it can, it can intensify, it can just totally disappear. Yeah. So it's it's kind of like watching a video game. Mm -hmm. um, we can see those fronts. thirty minutes before you're going to get it. Yeah, you know? we can see those fronts at our house because we're up on that little like knoll, and uh, there's a road, uh, you know, like the highway or the the road that we're on. There obviously is no trees, so That's we true. have like a little bit of an opening towards uh, looking to the west, and yeah. you can see those fronts come in. And sometimes, yeah, you can see them split in half, or yeah. sometimes they come in and they just dissipate. Yeah, so I feel a little bit bad for uh, drumming a cable and. And Hayward, because a lot of times, you know, Lake Superior pushes most of the bad stuff south of us, mm -hmm. and you hear they get hammered. getting hammered down yeah. there. But we're yeah. just close enough to Lake Superior where, where, you know, we still get it. Yeah, but for sure, protect it a little bit. And we're, it's cooler, you know. Um, yeah. I I was shocked on how much cooler it is in a town like Port Wayne or mm -hmm. uh, Cornucopia. We drove up there last week when it was blistering hot. You know, yeah. when that humidity came in yeah and it's like 20 degrees cooler yeah and yeah, you uh, crest the hill and all of a sudden yeah. you're reaching for a jam yeah we had the windows down because it's like well it's a warm day and then all of a sudden it was like yo man we're this is this is we're mer we're on the verge of hoodie weather now all yeah. of a sudden and it's just 20 minutes 20 well minutes where, where your house is you're in sand country yeah we were the same when we were when we were uh just south of iron river yeah and when it's hot it's dry hot, very hot. Yeah. even if it's humid, but I mean, it just bakes. Yeah. And uh, and like you said, you go a little bit north or or even a little bit south, south sometimes in the river country, it, it cools off. Yeah. Of, yeah. But yeah. it's a great area. So uh, I want to talk to you about this uh, this coffee roasting thing that you're going to be oh, doing. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we talked about it a little bit before we recorded. And uh, yeah, I want to hear about it. Well, it uh, COVID was. COVID was, uh, you know, and I say this understanding that millions of people died from COVID. Yeah. Okay. So talking about just from a business standpoint, uh, very difficult because uh, we, we had some pretty strong protocols. So you take a big hit on revenue, but you're doing it based on, on what your culture is and, and making decisions that you think are right. So while it was difficult from, from that standpoint, it afforded us something that we never have and that's time. And uh, you know, but like I said before, we've spent 19 years building this model, yeah. and um, it allowed us to look deeper into our model as to what it is that we are and how we can appropriately monetize it, so that we're we're enhancing the experience. We're not just we're not just uh, leeching off yeah. the experience, and so things like hot sauces. We've we've always enjoyed hot sauces with our customers, but they've been somebody else's, you know. And and when you're when you're buying hot sauces and then serving them and then selling them, you're getting the retail margin. That's it. So uh, Nina spent 
uh, a bunch of the off season in the kitchen formulating our own hot sauce. It's based on our experience with customers and what kind of hot sauces they like. So yeah. now we have four different hot sauces that we um, can do as a production facility in the off season because we have this production facility. Yeah. And they're branded your and they're branded your ours. Yeah. And we can keep people employed in the off season creating um, inventory for us yeah, for the main season, season. Yeah. We're, and, and we're realizing the, the manufacturer, the distribution, and the, the retail margin yeah, on it. That's awesome. So that omni-retail approach, so you look at yourself and say, what, what else are we in that we could be making ourselves that has the shelf life to be able to create in the off-season when you're not in your main season, mm -hmm. but you can you can have the, the retail benefit when, when you're cranking. Yeah. So it's it's uh, the hot sauces. Uh, uh, my wife Nina had a, a brand of, and we sold it for Fort Atkinson and everywhere else too. Okay. But jalapeno Nina's spicy pickle garlic. Nice. And uh, <laughs> she had like fifty retail outlets throughout oh, the, cool. the, the state, but she was what doing it all herself. Yeah. So the diner bought that brand, and now it's uh, Delta Diner's pickle garlic, and we we re licensed to be able to produce it in the diner. Sure. We're, we are able to can the hot sauces, our, our um, jerk sauce, which is very popular from the Tap Shack, same thing. We now have jars of it that we can sell. And so we're, we're a production facility for a large part in the off season, but that's all gonna be, like you said, inventory, which is gonna allow us yeah. to, to, and we're in the coffee business. You know, we, we do 1,500 pounds of roasted beans every year at the yeah, diner. Right. So we're already in the business and, you know, why wouldn't we be roasting that? And luckily, I, I have a friend who who is capable of being the roaster yeah. because of his background, who's passionate about it. But we have this neat little stone building that's our seasonal ice cream and coffee coffee business. Yeah. Well, now it has a, a you know nice Dietrich uh, roaster in it. We can do up to uh, twenty five pounds an hour. Yeah. So not only can we roast uh, our specific diner brand and and different variations of coffee. But we can also uh, capture our customers who are coming in, and and provide them that diner experience at home year round, yeah. just just through our shopping cart. Yeah. Um, and I've always wanted to reach out because there's this greater diner community mm -hmm. that since the '30s, uh, especially on the East Coast, yeah. had a diner in their neighborhood, and you know. Most diners have horrible coffee, in my mind. I don't know what you call it <laughs> yeah. around the road. Yeah, well, I said yeah. that earlier. It was yeah. like, you're like, you take a sip of diner coffee and you're like, yep. Yeah, but when, <laughs> I, was was at, when I was on the road doing sales, I would drink Mountain Dew and eat corn nuts because they made me sick to my stomach. And you can't fall asleep if you're sick to your stomach. I used to drink uh, yeah. Mountain Dew Black Label while driving semi. Same reason. Yeah. It's like, if you got gut rot, you're not falling asleep exactly. on the wheel. Exactly. Yeah. That's a safety factor. <laughs> yeah. But, so there are all these people who they love the coffee and the remembrance of the coffee simply because they love the diner. So yeah. we'll create uh, we'll create a brand of diner coffee so that you don't have to love the diner, love the coffee. Yeah, and you're hoping to be able to offer this coffee to customers so that they can order it and then you ship it to them. Right. And yeah. then also so it, it might be a subscription where they're just getting regular, or it yeah. may just be on a on a per order basis. Yeah. But you know, capturing uh, from our customer base. Um, you know, through through social media and also through the, the individual visits here this yeah. summer, and then building up that business because then there's another way for us to keep people employed in a very seasonal economy up here yeah. uh, without having the deficit spend. Because you know, yeah. we, for the last 19 years, we've deficit spent by 50, 60 grand a year just to keep people employed in the off season. Yeah, and this would then make it a a, a viable business. Um, yeah, reason for keeping people employed other than just trying to do the right thing by your community. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because we have we had talked when we first met that we have the opposite off seasons. Yeah, um, which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, when you're when you're slow, I'm busy, and when I'm busy, you're slow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, there's so, opportunity. In that. Yeah, yeah, there and is. and you have an awful lot you can teach us. So we're we're gonna yeah, figure I'm, something out. I'm so. learning a bunch from you. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been super into that. Uh, the and I'm super into the fact you're roasting coffee. I'm hoping that we can eventually partner on some well, whiskey river roast of some sort. And that'd be and, awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be some it's gonna be technology cool. with with containers and stuff like that to yeah. to hopefully blow people away with some fun stuff. Yeah, it's been interesting to work with community 
based businesses in the area. Uh, right now, we are partnering with Jim's Meats for the, yep. their beef sticks, offering those in orders and shipping those out. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have gotten a free beef stick, and Jim's is uh, middle of August. We're looking at they're going to be putting together some samples for us for our own oh. beef, Whiskey River beef stick. We just oh, finished cool. a graphic. Uh, Bruce's Graphics, just a buddy of ours that does a lot of our graphic work, just finished up the label, and um, we're hoping to offer, I don't know, it's the spice. I can't remember his name. The spice guy that was in Ashland. You you know who he is. He used to, his parents used to own the meat. Uh, uh, oh, oh yeah, Andy. Andy. Andy yeah. Person. He, yeah. So he's doing the like um, spice palette or awesome. uh, cl- You know he's putting together those for Jim's and then Jim is uh, Jim's meats is going to be um, putting them together some small batches for us. Well, the cool thing about Andy is not only is he the spice guy, but he's a master meat crafter. Yeah. So I mean, he knows that business from top to top to bottom. So yeah, he's almost the perfect one. Of, another perfect example of people that are up here that are super passionate about yep. what they do. Uh, yep. Like you were talking about Ashland Baking Company, and well, when, um, when Andy was with Six Three Market, his family owned that uh, for a long time. We now use Jones uh, uh, Dairy Farm uh, uh, Double. Cherry wood smoke bacon. Yeah. Out of Fort Atkinson. Out of Fort Atkinson. Yeah. But uh, uh, Andy made our Delta Diner bacon. So it actually had our name on it. They were selling it there as Delta Diner. It was a really good applewood smoke bacon. But then they transitioned on to, to other things. So, you know, yeah. you, you find other partners. But, uh, um, and that's it. You know, I mean, like with you, with Jim's and us with Ashton Baking Company or Earth Rider or Cell Shore Brewery, uh, who, who we partner with, you know, the, the value in those relationships. Um, the organic nature of them, you know, part of it is them, you incorporating their story into your story. So your, your story becomes richer. Part of it is why make something that somebody else can make for you and do just as it, it probably even a better job doing it. I mean, they're the and experts. You can look at other things, yeah. you know, and he's an expert in spices. I yeah. mean, I'm not going to try to figure out spices. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. Uh, and also, I can't. I'm not making beef sticks like Jim's meats. Is able to crank out like right. you know, thousands right. of beef sticks, and I'm I'm just not able to. I guess they're not called beef sticks, meat sticks. Yeah. Um. But um. Yeah. It's been it's been interesting to uh, partner with them. It makes me uh, enjoy this area. And one of the reasons why we moved up here was I wanted to move to Montana really bad. Mm-hmm. I still want to move to Montana really bad. <laughs> but I wanted. I found a couple small towns. You're a little bit closer. Yeah, I'm a yeah. little closer. Um, and I found a couple small towns out in Montana that I enjoyed. The the like, it's it's similar to how you talk about the diner and capturing that, and it is like the western vibe or the mm-hmm. like small. I don't want to say small town necessarily because there's some larger towns out west that I mean, incorporate this, but it is the um, the. It's wild almost in a way. It's right. like in order for me to offer beef sticks, I can I can just go to my local butcher and talk to him about beef sticks and them about beef sticks and we can get that. Yeah. That reminds me of like cowboy days sure. of you know, yeah. of that like that that feel that there's this little ecosystem, this little uh, established base in each one of these small towns mm-hmm. and they're it's very 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 old school out west uh, and we i feel it here that if you need something someone in the area right is willing to help you no well, that's and that's one of the reasons why we live here you know mm-hmm. i mean it's they're talk about you know monetizing things in business and all that but you know what there's there's, there's social profit yeah and you don't hear about it anymore yeah and uh we're huge into it because you know that's part of life yeah. I mean, life is not just money. I mean, yeah, uh, sure. if it is, it's pretty narrow. Yeah. Um, it's it's a social interaction and that engagement. Uh, that's why we love our, our local partnerships. Now, each one of them has value from a business standpoint, obviously. Right, naturally. But they're synergistic in that in the, the two of us working together um, creates far more value than just monetary value. It creates right. this connection. And that's, that's why we live here. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I think a lot of times when, especially when I was working in Chicago, it's heavy in Chicago, it is like, if I don't, uh, how is it, like, 
it's like there's a fine they act as if there's a finite amount of things right. and everyone's fighting over it and if somebody's moving forward somebody's moving back exactly not realizing if that you're if, doing better i'm doing worse yeah if you and i partner on something there's a good chance that you and i are both going to benefit more than if you try to take right. it on full or i try to take it on full and right. it's like uh there's an advantage for both of us and in the big city down there uh and uh, i saw it a little bit in fort atkinson it's like Hey, I'm not getting in your way. I'm on the internet, right. <laughs> you know, like we're right. And uh, just because I'm doing this thing doesn't mean that it's going to hurt you. Yeah. And I really like that up here. Uh, I've gotten partnering with a few people and talking to a few people in this area. It has it has been like the rising tides lifts all boats mindset that I really yeah. really enjoy. Yeah. Now, that's an old saying, but it's so true. It's so true. And not everybody subscribes to it. Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> if I sink your boat. <laughs> My boat's gonna float higher. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. You go roll over there with that plan. I'm gonna go find some people that wanna yeah. you know, hang out and help and yeah. be friendly, yeah. so. Um, yeah, and, it, and again, it, it's also just the, the enjoyment of, I mean, business is a, by nature a financial pursuit, but we're in businesses because um, we wanna enjoy businesses and we wanna, you know, have, other types of impacts. And, yeah, I always say know. that it's like we. I want to play the game. Yeah. I want to continue to do this. Yeah. I, I I want to wake up every morning to do this. I don't yeah. want to do anything else. Uh, and if that's your goal, yeah, is to just continue to do it, then you're going to find the ways to make sure that someone doesn't sink your ship, and right. you're going to help other people. You know. Well, if you start business from scratch like you have and, and like we did, uh, mm -hmm. you got to love to build ship too. Yeah. And part of it's just that, you know, yeah. because. Uh, when I saw it at your house the other day, and you know, you you look at what you got, and you got this vision, you know, that that incremental gains in terms of that vision coming to, to fruition mm -hmm. is is um, is a pretty rewarding thing. Yeah, it's like one measurement. I keep saying it, it's a one measurement at a time. Yeah. It's like every time I read the tape measure, it's becoming progressively better. Yeah. In this building that we're in right now, this is the warehouse. It's like all yeah. week we've been hanging steel, you know, yeah. and. Uh, some of the best days that I've had up in the last two months has yeah. been me just screwing into the yeah. ceiling. And it's like, it feels weird that that's what I've been enjoying, but that's, I'm seeing this vision come together. Well, and, and Tom's looking down on you and smiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. You're, you're turning this building into into a pretty cool uh, distribution center, which yeah. is awesome. Yeah, I sent Cam a video, a you know, a, a 360 view of me, yeah. uh, of this, <laughs> the warehouse and how it's looking, because she used to work, Kim is the daughter of, uh, Tom, who used to run the hardware store here, and this was his appliance showroom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, uh, Todd included, Todd spent probably a lot of money here. <laughs> I spent uh, a lot of time here. Yeah, I had a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> with appliances. And uh, most of the locals uh, who've been here for more than 10 years bought some sort of an appliance out of this building. And yeah. so we're making it more open and uh, more of a fulfillment center than a, a showroom slash, uh, I guess he worked on things back here too. So. Uh, I sent Kim the video and she was like, wow, that's looking great. So it's yeah. it's just been nice to have the community kind of yeah. around. You yeah. know, people are, we have an overhead door in the back and uh, there's a couple bars that share that alley. So we've been, people have been <laughs> peeking their heads in and being like, wow, this looks great. Wow, this is real, I'm glad you're doing something with it. So that like communal support has been really cool to see. And um, it's, it's it like makes it worth the, when you're when you're doing this, the the task of building something, it's like, um, it's like, well, people are going to notice and people are going to see that we're putting the effort in and changing this and that yep. that's going to get the attention. It's just the, well, and you're bringing something to the area that, I mean, the, the, the savvy in terms of, you know, any, any area like this, um, you know, it's, it's, it's an economically depressed area because yep. of the seasonality. Um, and, and like the train doesn't come through anymore. Right, and, right. And, and, it's, and, that, and that's, new that's not me being negative about yeah. the area. It's just it's an reality thing yeah. with, with what we have. And um, it's kind of like the, the local farming. Uh, we have a lot of really passionate local farmers up here. And you can do all the farmers markets you want. You can, you can you know, get restaurants to buy your stuff. But until you have money coming from outside the area, for the products you produce and bring in, bring that money into the area, yeah. it has limited a li limited uh, sustainability as a as an economy. Yeah, and with you coming in, that's exactly what you do. Yeah, you you bring uh, we're bringing retail benefit from yeah. all over. Yeah, 
and the money lands here. Yeah. But you're doing it in a way that gives gives the customers value, so it's it's sustainable. But it but it impacts the local area with outside yeah. money. Yeah, should, exactly. And it's tourism does that too, but that happens. Four yeah, you're seeing it with the people who drive up yeah, and yeah, absolutely. coming into the area, coming out of the cities, coming out of Duluth, day yeah. trips, and we're seeing it when and it's like they're coming into our store on the right. internet and buying it, and then we're buying supplies right. out of the local and, area. And Gems has been doing that. That's why they built yeah. their new facility years ago. Yeah, they ship because, out a lot because yeah. they ship out a lot. Yeah, um, areas like this with that ability and that savvy and that technology with the, 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 the passion and a lot of the artists and nature mm -hmm. of what's up here because of who wants to live here, those two things together yeah. can transform this area. And the internet is is still the wild west. Yeah. You know, like we're still in the wild west phase of yeah. e-commerce uh, where it's evolving well, every day. And Dalton's over there with this little thing that he's recording. <laughs> and and I'm one. still blown away when I'm looking at that thinking, okay, gotta have one. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, it's like tech is tech is advancing so fast that like a business like Jim's, if they wanted to, yeah. they can, and they did, they can transition into a facility, a new facility, and and they can be on the heels of a um, you know Slim Jim right. company or a, right. or you know some of these meat uh, shipping companies very easily yeah. with with the launch of a website and some uh, marketing background right. they can they can be a huge company yeah what you can do with your brand and up here is a very is incredible is very that i guess that's kind of what i was looking for is kind of wild westy you know right. in the in the when i was talking about montana and such it's like uh, everybody up here is doing their own thing and the ability to be able to bring outside money in it feels yeah. very much like the wild west in a in a sense it's like well and, and I, that, you know i think people coming up here who kind of have a, a passion for something they want to build mm -hmm. we all tend to have a really high financial pain threshold too yeah which which, <laughs> yeah. which has to come with it yeah you go. know because somewhere down the road it's going to pay off the money will follow but yeah uh, you know one of the things you'll learn about people up in this area is that um from an entrepreneurial standpoint most everybody knows how to do a whole lot of different things yeah you know whether it be um, plumbing electrician Building. Working on cars. Yeah. yeah, I mean the sweat equity part of it, like you going out and hanging your own steel and that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, you got to be handy yeah. uh, to be able to build the infrastructure for what you want to do, or else you got to you you, you got to be a Rockefeller to <laughs> yeah. pay somebody else to, to come in, in from outside money. Right. right. Basically, yeah. you're bringing a contractor in from the cities. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. most of the people who are in the area that have the money yeah. uh, are are bringing people in from hours away. Yeah. Crews. Now there's the, the cool thing is people who really get engaged here and they may be here a month out of the year. Um, as they're here, they learn, I mean, cause we have a lot of really good local contractors. Yes. Yeah. So they learn who they are and then they're, they're bringing, bringing that money to uh, the local contract. But you also have to, you have to understand that a lot of local contractors work different than a C cause it's not a big crew. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are a couple of, there are a number of outfits that have larger crews where if it's a cabin build on the day they need three people, there are three there. On the day there's one, there's one, you know. Yeah. Um, but a lot of this is is two guy crews who yeah. are really good artisans that they're gonna build your place, but they're gonna build it on their timeline. On yeah. their timeline. Because yeah. that's what they can do. Yeah. And, exactly. and you gotta you gotta be able to embrace that for yeah. what it is. If it's no different than uh, if you don't do that and you hire them. Uh, it's like coming into the diner and thinking you're going to get custom bacon. Because it, yeah, it's true. That's it's not true. how it works. It's true. Know? Yeah, yeah. You have to have realistic expectations up here on, on a lot of things. You know, we. Uh, well, and you do a good job of managing your customers' expectations yeah. through your social media. Yeah. That's that's what we do too. People only get pissed off um, if they don't understand and they're in the dark, and then yeah. they get frustrated. And you got Tina as your front end, and Tina, she is. Tina she she, she makes sure that everyone knows exactly yeah. how. The day is going to go for them. Yeah. <laughs> She's Tina, great at that. Tina's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it wasn't Tina, it was a, uh, early on, it was a, another gal. Yeah. Uh, back when we didn't have as large a staff. Okay. So literally, we had a cash register on the counter, and I was mm -hmm. going over from the grill, ringing out, washing my hands, going back and cooking. I mean, we, uh -huh. were, we were just all over yeah. the place. But this, this gal who kind of protected the door. Yeah. We, we discovered we have to protect the door, otherwise we're, we're, we're dead. Overwhelmed, yeah. And uh, Tina protects it yeah. right now. <laughs> so that position, we call it the flow, um, had a regular 
customer early on come up to me and say, you know, I don't want to complain, but, uh, um, and uh, it was Diane at the time. Mm -hmm. You know, Diane was pretty curt with me at the door. And I just turned around from the grill because I got tickets everywhere and I just looked at him and I said, I understand what you're saying, but you know what? You don't hire a poodle if you need a pit bull. <laughs> and, and he just looked at me and smiled and said, okay, I can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, and it's part of the diner experience. It's yeah. like when I went to truck stop diners, there was a Tina. Yeah. Like, yeah. That she's like, I'll get to you in a second. You need yeah. to chill. You yeah. know, like, and it's like, yeah. okay, okay. And yeah, it's cool because people are really excited to be there. But she's gonna she's gonna be talking to four hundred people in a six hour period. Yeah. And she's got this much time to communicate a message. It's not that she doesn't want to have a nice, pleasant conversation right. on the day she can. She will. Yeah. But like right now, because you have 40 people standing behind you, it's like, here's what you need to know. Yeah. I'm going to take care of you. I won't forget you. I will come get you. And now I need to move on to the next Yes, thing. I need yeah. your name and I need to know how many you have yeah. and I'll figure it out. Can we go in and look around? No, yeah. because you're going to be in the way. And you are going to be that customer who's in a booth in about an hour. And we need to take care of you when you're in there. Exactly. Like you exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, she she does a really good job of managing your guys' customer. Got, got to have something. Yeah. And yeah. in the, on the front end. Um, so we're gonna wrap this up. But okay. I wanted to know uh, if you want to plug anything or just uh, kind of let people know where the diner is. Yeah. The yeah. Uh, Delta Diner, Delta Wisconsin. Um, we're actually three venues. So we have the main diner, which is the restored diner, and um, that's DeltaDiner.com if you go to our website. Uh, also on the website are Tap Shack, which is uh, uh, right now Thursday through Sunday we do uh, authentic Caribbean fare. So jerk chicken, pork, fish, ribs, seafood burgers, and then on Mondays it's burgers. Yes. One of our taste testers here, he did a good job. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then Taste Buds where we're gonna start doing the roasting and you know, watch for that. It's gonna, it's gonna be cool coffee and uh, we're gonna be working with you guys. You can yeah. teach us a few things on how to get word out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're all located on the same property, yep. right on H. Yep, right on and, H. Uh, in Delta, Wisconsin, definitely worth the drive if you're within six hours, seven hours, 20 hours, yeah. whatever. Come, right. come stay for a while. Yeah, come There's stay for a while. There's cool stuff up here. I'll open up our place so you guys can hang out here. If, you, uh, if you're watching the Sun Whiskey Rivers End, you can, uh, you can hit both, both places. And, um, Always a pleasure, here. man. Yeah. Yeah. Nice talking. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Absolutely. guys. Be good. Is it a record? Uh, do you have a time on it? Yeah, yeah, it was like a.